Welcome back. Today I'd like to teach you how to find the intercepts and the asymptotes of the following function of x squared minus x minus 6, all being divided by x squared minus 4, and then we're going to sketch the thing a little bit. So first thing is, what you want to do whenever you're finding intercepts, asymptotes, and all the stuff of a rational function, is you want to make sure it's fully factored. Okay, if you already recognize that it's fully factored and nothing cancels, that's great. But what I want to do is I want to see if there's any, any hidden factors here that's going to cancel. All right. So let me just copy this again. So there's going to be x squared, uh, x squared, come on, there you go, minus x, minus 6, all being divided by x squared minus 4. Okay, so I realized that the numerator, I'd have to find two values that multiply to negative 6, but yet add to a negative 1, right? So that's simply going to be x, that's going to be a, sorry, negative 3, and then a positive 2, right? They both multiply negative 3 and positive 2 to negative 6, but yet they're going to add to a negative 1. And then the denominator, notice we have a perfect square, so this simply works out to be x plus 2 and then x minus 2. Now notice, what do we have? We have common factors. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Okay? This is extremely important because if you do the problem without getting rid of those common factors, everything is going to be wrong. So what you're left with is your function in most simplified form is going to be x minus 3 divided by x minus 2. This is the function we're going to use now to analyze the problem. Okay? So let's now do the intercepts. Okay? So when we do the intercepts, we'll do the x-intercept first. All you're going to do is take all the y values and set them equal to 0 of this function. So basically, wherever you have y, just plug in a 0. Like that. And then... Just solve for x. So you're going to cross multiply here, okay? But that's just going to be 0, and that's going to be equal to then 3 minus x. No, excuse me, x minus 3. Whoa, boy. I think I'm going to be done after this one. Um, and then i got to add the 3 out over to the left-hand side, so it would be simply x is going to be equal to a positive 3, okay? So the coordinates of the x-intercept, well, then it has an x-coordinate of 3 and a y-coordinate of 0, right? I mean, that's what we found. When y is 0, x is 3, okay? That's a coordinate. Cool. Now to find the y-intercepts, we're going to do the opposite. In other words, you're going to set x now equal to 0 and solve it for y. Okay? So don't write 0 there, put a y. And everywhere you see x now, just plug in a little oh, 0. Okay, 0 and 0. And then solve this. This should be negative 3 over negative 2, which is equal to a positive 3 over 2 or 1 half, right? So the y-intercept always has an x value of 0, and then the y-coordinate of 3 over 2, or 1.5. All right, so that takes care of that. Next, we're going to work with the asymptotes. So uh, for the vertical asymptote, again, you're going to take that fully factored function of y is equal to x minus 3 we had divided by x minus 2, and you're going to set this denominator equal to 0. Just set it equal to 0 and solve it for x. And what that gets you now is this gives you the actual equation of the vertical asymptote. Remember, all vertical asymptotes are horizontal lines. Uh, excuse, what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, i got to stop after this one. All vertical asymptotes are vertical lines. I'm sure you were thinking, like, what the hell is he talking about? I don't know. I really don't know. But my brain is on fire at the moment. So I do apologize. Anyway. Uh, what I meant to say is, remember, all vertical asymptotes have, a, have an equation of x equaling some constant. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're now going to move on to the slant asymptote or the horizontal asymptote. Now the way we view this is we're going to analyze them in the same way because uh, what I'm going to do is I have to determine whether I have a top-heavy, an equally heavy function, or a bottom-heavy function. Now, for this one, you can do either one. You can do you can analyze this one, or you can analyze the original. If you analyze this, notice how the highest power, what do we mean we have top, equal, and bottom? The highest power of x in the numerator is a 1. The highest power of x in the denominator is a 1. That's considered an equally heavy function. If this was squared now, and that's to the 1, that's a top heavy, and vice versa. If that's squared, and that's to the 1, that's a bottom heavy, okay? So in this particular case, we have an equally heavy function, and we're going to have a horizontal asymptote, therefore. So equally heavy functions have horizontal. Bottom heavy also have a horizontal. Remember, the bottom uh, horizontal asymptote is always y equals 0. And the top would have a slant asymptote. Now we're going to have to do some long division. But 
For this problem, anytime we have an equally heavy function, what we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficient of the highest power of x in the numerator, 1, divided by the coefficient of the highest power of x in the denominator, 1, and the result there will be the equation of our line. In other words, y equals 1. That is going to be the horizontal asymptote. So now all you have to do is just graph these things, okay? And we got to think a little bit. First, let's graph the x and the y-intercepts. So we have an x-intercept at 3, 0, so that's going to be over here. We have a y-intercept at 0, 3 over 2, so that's going to be roughly here, okay? And then let's put the vertical asymptote x is equal to 2, so that looks like boom, right around here. I'm going to dash it just so we don't confuse it with the original axis. Okay, and then I also have a horizontal uh, asymptote right here, y equals 1, so I'm going to do it like that. Now, this one works out to be kind of very nice. Oh. The reason being is because, if you notice, this uh, when we look at these horizontal asymptotes, we really have four quadrants now. One over here, one over here, one over here, and one over there. I'm using stars and circles. Um, that's kind of what I'm seeing at the moment. And... Um, your graph is going to be on one of these two quadrants on the left and one of these two quadrants on the right. I already have points both to the left of the vertical asymptote and to the right. So I don't really have to think too hard about this one because the asymptotes will be, or the graphs will look just like, well, kind of like this. This thing curves it too much. Sorry. How can I get this thing to work a little better? There we go. Okay, so this is going to basically be this function. The way the graph is going to look. Remember, it never touches the asymptotes. It's going to come close. It's going to approximate, but it's never going to touch. Okay, and we're going to have something that looks like this in here as well. Okay, it doesn't curve. It's just going to keep on going straight, straight, straight on down. All right, and if you want, we can double check now. Go to your calculator and plug in the function. So in the numerator, open the parentheses, do x squared minus x, minus 6, divided by x squared, minus 4. Hit graph. Doesn't that look similar? Right? Look at that. Beautiful thing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. And if it did, if you don't mind giving us a hand, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. That's really the best way to help us out. We have thousands of videos out there, not only in math, but chemistry and physics as well, because we really want to help you through your class. The best way to do well is to do tons of practice problems. You can use our channel for a ton of practice, along with worked out solutions step by step. We want to help you along the way. We'd love to help you with more. Take care.